Welcome to the committee today. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and indeed many friends in the audience, it's a great pleasure to be here with you all today. It's a great pleasure as well to listen to some of our American colleagues who have worked directly with the people in Camp Ashraf. They're the people that uh, I recall Lord Corbett describing as the brave of the brave. And I certainly think we all agree with that here today. But there are also another group of people who I want to, to uh, bring to your attention, and that's a group of Iranians, family and friends of the residents of Camp Ashraf, who've been sa staging a sitting in Geneva for over 300 days. I was pleased to, to meet with them back in September and to hear what they had to say to the UN. They're determined to stay there until their loved ones are free and secure. So from here today in London, I'd like to salute them. And I'd also like to salute the brave residents of Ashraf. Salam Ashraf. But we have gathered here once again today to address the alarming humanitarian situation in Camp Ashraf. Today, I want to raise the issue of broken promises, neglected responsibilities, the lack of colourage, of failed policies, and destructive steps which have allowed an accumulation of obstacles to remain that have prevented a humanitarian and peaceful solution to the crisis in Camp Ashraf. The broken promises of the US that recognizes the residents of Ashraf as protected persons under the Fourth Geneva Convention and assure the residents of their protection in return for their means of self-promotion. The broken promises of the Secretary General's Special Representative for Iraq to not sign anything regarding the residents of Ashraf's future without their approval. Yet regardless of this, he signed a memorandum of understanding with the Iraqi government on the December the 25th. The broken promise of the UN, the EU and the US that the relocation of residents to the so-called Camp Liberty would be voluntarily. But now we see how Mr. Kobler threatens the residents that if they don't take up this offer, they should be prepared to face Iraqi government's violence aggression. The Iraqi government, under pressure from Iran, is stonewalling the UNHCR process and even the MOJ itself. They prevented the residents from taking their personal belongings and even uh, prevented Camp Liberty residents themselves from highlighting this terrible injustice. Mr. Kobler did nothing to help these people. The broken promise of the Iraqi government to treat residents humanely, yet they were attacked by the same forces who were supposed to protect them. Critically ill people, injured patients of Ashraf are also prevented from seeking medical care and attention. That is in addition to the inhumane pressure, the cruel siege and the psychological torture and isolation that people are experiencing within the camp. I'll talk also about the neglected responsibility by the international community and the UN to prevent the secure protection of Ashraf residents in accordance with the law adopted by the UN in 2006 under the Responsibility to Protection Act. The neglected responsibility of the US to hold the Iraqi government to account for three years of repeated and deliberate abuse of human rights to the residents of Camp Ashraf. Again, I look at the neglected responsibility by the UN to hold account to the Iraqi government for two bloody attacks against the camp, which resulted in the death of 47 defenseless innocent residents. Acts that were condemned by the international community who sought an independent and transparent investigation of the Iraqi forces' use of excessive violence. But so far, no investigation has taken place and no one has been charged for these crimes against humanity. The lack of courage by the UN and the UNAMI to say no to the Iraqi government when they tried to impose a ridiculous deadline on, camp, on closing Camp Ashraf. The idea that 3,400 residents, unarmed citizens, are threatening the national security of Iraq and the Iraqi sovereignty is absolutely ridiculous, mind-baffling and illogic. The policies of the US to maintain the PMOI as one of the most terrorist, feared terrorist organisations within the world is simply ridiculous. This was simply an act to appease the Iranian regime 
in an effort to seek that they come to the table to negotiate their clandestine and suspicious nuclear program. That isn't in despite of the US appeal court ordering the US Secretary of State to review the designation and recommend a revocation based upon evidence the court had seen. But even 180 days later, that had not happened. Therefore, for the PMOI to still be on the list is not only a failed policy, it's also in contempt of the US court itself. Far worse, the terror designation is a pretext, an excuse, for the Iraqi government to treat the 3,000 residents of Camp Ashraf inhumanely and to attack them with impunity. This allows the Iranian regime to eliminate its main opposition, whom, by the way, are considered as asylum seekers by the UN Refugee Agency. The failed policies of the US and the EU are still believed that they can persuade the Iranian regime to give up its race for a nuclear weapon, a byproduct of 15 years of appeasement by the UN, by the EU, and also by this country as well. And to mention the destructive steps by the UN, the UNAMI, and the Secretary General's special representative for, for Iraq, who still trust and place the security of Camp Ashraf's residents in the hands of the Iraqi Prime Minister is simply unacceptable. Having mentioned all these broken promises and neglected responsibilities, it is obvious that the EU, the UN, and Mr. Kobler have to reverse all of the above. They have to be strong and they have to be brave. And most of all, they have to stand up to the bullying of the Iraqi government and the Iranian regime. They have to speak with one voice and speak loudly and say no to the Iraqi government. To say enough is enough. The Iranian regime will not be allowed to ridicule the international community anymore. They have to say to the rest of the Camp Ashraf residents that they do not have to move, that the UNHCR process must start immediately at Camp Ashraf, and those people remaining <laughs> Finally, I want to say something to the people here in this room today. I want to continue to encourage you and not to despair. Any reign of terror that we have seen, any tyrant or dictator is doomed to fail at the hand of the oppressed. No matter how dark the hours, or no matter how long the road, no matter how difficult the sacrifice, or no matter the solitude of oppression, tyranny is no match for liberty and justice, and that liberty and justice will prevail. In the words of Winston Churchill, another politician we've named today, I will say, never, never, never give up. And I'm sure many of you echo in your own minds something that Mrs. Rajavi says, which is, you can and you must. A democratic change will come and triumph will happen in Iran because of the courageous people in Iran, the courageous people in Ashraf, and the courageous people here today. Your resistance is a symbol of the struggle and freedom of the democracy that we so sadly want in Camp Ashraf. And rest assured that even though we have lost a great supporter of our cause in the last few days, we will continue to support the brave residents of Ashraf. Every one of those brave and courageous people we will continue to support along every step of the way on their journey towards freedom and democracy in Iran. Thank you very much.